Rose rosette is one of the most serious disease of roses that we have in Oklahoma, and it's also common throughout much of the central and eastern United States. Rose rosette, unfortunately, doesn't kill the rose plants for several years, but almost initially it'll start to disfigure them. You'll see unusual shape to the leaves, so we have a distortion. You'll also see discoloration of the foliage. Now, one of the colors that you'll see in the foliage is that the foliage may take on a more a red color that doesn't fade with time. And you don't want to confuse this with new growth because a lot of roses will have a red color to the new growth that later, as those leaves expand and mature, take on the normal green color. With rose rosette, the color doesn't usually fade out. You might also notice the leaves are more slender and somewhat rumpled or distorted. Other things to look for would be an overproduction of prickles or thorns, and sometimes you may have a witch's broom effect where you have a reduction in the distance between the nodes, so you have a real bunchy appearance to the foliage. Sometimes these are actually so heavy you'll find them weighted down on the ground. Now, with rose rosette, if you need more information, if you're trying to determine if the symptoms are present on your plant, we do have a pictorial guide to rose rosette that you can look at. I would say if you're seeing at least three of the symptoms on that pictorial guide, there's a good indication that it's rose rosette. We also have a fact sheet that has a lot of pictures and shows the symptoms close up, as well as some of the information about management I'm about to discuss. If you believe you might have rose rosette or in your landscape, the management is a little bit uh, severe. We used to think that we could just prune off one small section and the plant would be saved. And unfortunately, research shows that's just not very effective. So if you have one plant showing symptoms of rose rosette and there's other roses in the area, then you need to remove that entire plant, including roots. So dig it up and throw it in the trash. Also pick up as much of the debris as possible. They, the way that this disease gets into your landscape is there are microscopic arthropods, they're called aerophyid mites, that bring in this virus. They blow into your landscape from someone else or from wild areas, and when these aerophyid mites feed on the plant, they transmit the virus, and you start to see the symptoms. When you are throwing away that infected plant, it is likely that you are also throwing away a lot of the mites carrying the virus so they don't blow onto other people's plants or your own plants. So be sure to throw them in the trash. And then I would suggest if you have other roses in your landscape to follow up with an application of horticultural oil. Now with rose rosette, the only known host is rose. So you don't have to worry about other non-roses getting the disease. And in fact, rather than planting a large population of roses, I would encourage you to use a mixed planting where you have roses mixed in with non-hosts, so other plants. That'll help slow the spread and reduce the amount of disease in your landscape. So some of the other considerations for rose rosette is that if you have rose rosette disease in your landscape, it's likely that it's also in other landscapes or wild areas around you. So it's a good idea to scout around your neighborhood or around wherever you live and see if there might be other reservoir plants that are harboring both the disease and those mites. If you're not sure, you can always consult with your county extension educator and they can let you know if the disease has been found in your area. Another tip for rose rosette is that if you are concerned about this disease, if you've seen it in your area, one other thing that will help is in the winter, so late winter, early spring, maybe February timeframe, before the roses start to push out new growth, 
you want to do your normal pruning, but I would encourage you to remove as much of the foliage and old blooms as possible. We think that's the main place that the mites survive the winter. So if you can remove as much of that leftover foliage and flowers as possible, it's gonna reduce the amount of disease. And then you can follow that heavy pruning with an application of dormant oil in late February or March, generally when the temperatures start to reach 50s up to 80s. Now, one of the questions that we sometimes have regarding rose rosette is, are there any resistant varieties? And there's a lot of studies in progress to try to figure out if that's the case or not. And so here we have Mike Schnelli from the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture to tell us about a study that's going on right here in Oklahoma. Thank you, Jen. Like you said, we've had a lot of anecdotal feedback on the roses, but until uh, to date where we have trials not only here in Stillwater at Oklahoma State University, but also our partners at Kansas State University, in the next two to three years will really tell the tale of those 50 to 51 cultivars, which admittedly is a modest start, but we're going to grow from there. We're going to get some ideas, I think, within two to three years of resistance, if not immunity, to this disease. Then we can hand over those results to rose breeders and actually start making some progress on this uh, dreaded malady. So, and part of these trials are being done here at Oklahoma and Kansas, but we're also partnered with uh, Texas A&M University, University of Tennessee, and University of Delaware, where they're also doing trials. So it's likely in the next few years, we're gonna have a number of varieties, cultivars, that are either resistant or tolerant to this disease. Some of them that are already ready for the market, and some of them that are being worked with by breeders. And when you look at the sheer number of cultivars of roses out in the market, this many universities, it's not overkill. We need that many partners to start making progress on that handful, uh, possibly more of roses that we can actually, again, hand over to breeders, go from there. So in the end, I think it's important we still grow roses here in Oklahoma. It's, they are a beautiful part of our landscape and we don't want to encourage anyone not to grow them, just to monitor the roses that they have and take action if you do see the symptoms develop. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.